Welcome back to the Simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be touching up some of the GUIs, and one of the major things that we're doing is actually making them scale perfectly for all different device sizes. Now, before we hop into Studio, we're going to want to do two things. The first thing that we're going to want to do is get the Auto Scale Light plugin. There will be a link down below in the description, which will take you to the plugin page, which you're seeing on the screen right now. In order to get this plugin, you're going to want to go ahead and click the Get Plugin button, and it should add it directly to Roblox Studio for you. If you're in Roblox Studio and you go to the Plugins tab, you should see this section right here, which says Auto Scale Light. And that's how you'll know that the plugin is definitely installed. Now, if you do not see this in the plugin section, then just restart your Roblox Studio. And once you restart it, you should be able to come over to the plugins tab once again and see the auto scale light section somewhere in this toolbar. Now, there's also one more thing that we need to do outside of Studio. In the description, there's going to be another link, which is going to take you to my website and specifically the lesson on creating perfectly scaling GYs. Now, I made a video on this, so I'm not going to explain the entire thing here. Feel free to watch that video after you finish this one to get a better understanding of exactly how we're scaling the GUIs. But on this page, you should see a sidebar which says scaling script. You're going to want to go to this section, and inside of here, we actually have a code box with an entire script. So what we're going to do is highlight all of this code, and then we're going to go ahead and copy it. And now we're going to go inside of Roblox Studio, and then we're going to go inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, and we're going to add a brand new local script to this. We'll go ahead and rename this to be called UI Scaler. The name of it doesn't actually matter, but that's what I'm going with. And then inside of here is where we're going to paste all of that code. It should be a total of 101 lines. And as you scroll up, you should not see anything on the line in red. And if your script looks like mine, then you did this all perfectly. Now that we have the scaling script in our game, and we also have the plugin installed, we're pretty much ready to start making changes to the game itself. There's one more thing that we do need to do though, and luckily this is in Roblox Studio. And what we need to do is emulate our device resolution, which will effectively allow us to all be creating GYs at the exact same screen size. So in order to do this, we're gonna to go to the test tab, and then inside of the emulation section, we're gonna click on device. Now, once we click on device, we can actually see that there are two boxes to kind of select from right here. The box on the left is the actual resolution. Now, the one that I always recommend going with is the HD 1080. It's under the desktop section and it's 1920 by 1080. And if you're following along with this video, I would definitely recommend choosing this one. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues. Along with that, the box on the right gives us a couple of options for how we want this emulation to work. Do we want the resolution to be the physical size of the device? Most likely not really. What we most likely want is fit to window. That allows us to actually see the entire screen without having to use scroll bars to scroll around to different parts of it. So make sure that you're emulating the same exact device or at least the same resolution, so 1920 by 1080. And now we can get on to modifying the GUIs. So to discuss the modifications that we're actually going to make to most of the GUIs, they are rather simple. In order to make our GUI scale for all different devices, pretty much the only thing that we need to do is change the size of the primary frame from scale to offset. And let me just show you exactly what I mean. So inside of the starter GUI, let's take a look at the achievement screen GUI. Inside of here, we have a frame. And if we look at the size of this frame, we can actually see that we're using scale instead of offset for the sizing here. Now, instead of using scale, we actually want to use offset, which will basically allow us to specify the amount of pixels on both the X and the Y axis for the size of this frame. Now, you could manually do that by hand, but that's a lot of work. To save us a lot of time, we're going to use the auto scale light plugin that I mentioned downloading earlier. So we're going to want to go to the plugin tab and then we're going to want to select the unit conversion tool. Now, once we select this, you should have a little screen that pops up right here, which says position and size. And then it has a scale and offset button for both of them. Now with our primary frame selected, what we're going to do is select the offset button underneath of size. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And when we click that, we can actually see that the size is automatically changed from using scale directly to offset. Now also to make this a little bit easier, I added sort of a visual element to this. I just created a simple Roblox Studio plugin, which will display the anchor point, position, and size property of the frame that I have selected. And the reason that I did this is so that it's easier for you viewers who are watching me do this. And you can easily view basically the most important properties or the only ones that we really need to keep in mind in this video. So if at any time you're wondering what the anchor point, position, or size property is of the frame that I have selected, then you can just look right down here beside the properties tab. Okay, so now that we've converted this frame size from scale to offset, we may need to adjust its size a little bit further. The reason for that is because when we actually created this GUI, we created that at a different resolution. So now if we look at the GUI, it might look a little bit more stretched out in a specific direction, 
compared to when we originally created it. So for instance, the achievements frame might not have actually been this tall when we created it, so we might want to decrease its size on the y-axis a little bit. And if you want to make this even nicer, you might want to go inside of some of these GUIs and just play around with the sizing or the positioning of certain things inside of here. So for instance, maybe we want to make the text label a little bit larger so that the text is just legitimately a little bit larger, and then we could recenter it as well. That's not what I'm actually going to do here, but I just wanted to point out that there are some slight other tweaks that you may want to make to these GUIs just to make them look a little bit nicer, but it's definitely not mandatory. What we're going to do right now is just what is actually mandatory to make these GUIs scale on all devices. We're not going to try to perfect the GUIs and make them look beautiful because that would take an incredible amount of time, but at least with this, we'll know how to actually make our GUIs scale for all different devices, and then you can do any final touch-ups to really polish the GUIs and make them look incredible. Now, we do not have to adjust its positioning at all, but I do want to make this a little bit nicer, and I also want to show you how I would do that. So, for the positioning of this frame, we want this frame to basically appear on the right-hand side of the screen, but we also want to give it a tiny bit of spacing from touching the right side of the screen. Now, there's actually a really easy way to do this. Let's go ahead and set the X of the anchor point to 1. Then, for the X scale on the position, we're going to set that to 1, as well. Now, when we do that, that makes this frame touch the right side of our screen, but we want to give it a tiny bit of spacing. So now let's actually modify the X offset of the position, and we're going to set this to negative five. And what that'll do is create a space of five pixels between this frame and the right side of the screen. Now, it might be a little bit hard to see that spacing right there. So if you did want to add more spacing, you certainly can, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it at negative five. And again, like I said, you didn't have to change the spacing there, but I think using this method gives us a lot more control over the GUI and allows us to be consistent because now we know, okay, we have a spacing between this and the right hand side of the screen of five pixels. So for this hatch goal bun, we would want to do the same thing. We would easily want to be able to say, okay, we want to give that a spacing of five pixels as well to keep it consistent with the frame that's directly above it. Okay, so now we're pretty much done with modifying the first GUI. The last thing that we need to do is actually add in a UI scale to this screen GUI, and then we need to add a tag and an attribute to this UI scale as well. So we're going to click the plus button on tags, and the tag that we want to use is called scale underscore component. Make sure that you spell that correctly, because if you don't, then it's not going to work. In addition to the tag, we're going to want to add an attribute to this. So we're going to click the plus icon next to attributes. Then for the name of this attribute, it's going to be base underscore resolution. And the type is actually going to be a vector too. Now that we've added the attribute, we want to specify the base resolution in which we created this GUI at. And remember, we enabled device emulation earlier, so we should all be creating these GUIs at the exact same resolution, which is 1920 comma 1080. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and test this out to make sure that our GUIs are scaling before we go on to the next one. So in order to test this out, we're actually going to change the device emulation from 1920 by 1080 down to really anything a lot smaller. And I'm just going to go with the iPhone 4S, so 480 by 320. And when you do this, the GUIs that we modified today are going to look extremely odd and out of place. And the reason for that is because we're using offset. So in studio, when we're kind of previewing these GUIs, the GUI scalar script did not run. So the GUIs are going to appear very odd, but all we have to do is go back to the original resolution that we were creating them at and we're all good to go and we can see them like normal. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and change the resolution to something much smaller to actually test this out. So now let's start up our game and see if the achievements GUI still looks as weird as it does now. Okay. And now that we've started up our game and we can actually see the achievements frame, we can see that that's looking normal and it doesn't look like its sizing is completely different than what we originally saw solid as. So that's how we know that this is actually working. A quick note though, if you are looking at this and you're comparing this to like the left buns or the left currency, the reason that this isn't centered vertically is because we did not toggle on the ignore GUI inset property. So if you're like that shouldn't be appearing that low on the screen, all you have to do is select the screen GUI and then toggle on the ignore GUI inset property. But keep in mind that the ignore GUI inset property and that whole thing is completely unrelated to like the scaling, sizing, and different things that we're doing today. Anyways, now that we know that this is working, we can definitely move on to the other GUIs. So let's reset our emulation back to 1920 by 1080, and we can go ahead and move on to the next GUI. So let's go to the badges GUI. Let's enable this so that we can actually see it. Then we'll select this frame. And again, we're gonna convert its size from scale to offset, just like that. Now, I think for the most part, the sizing looks fine. You might want it to be a little bit less tall, but I think that I'm actually fine with that. It doesn't look drastically oversized or anything, but if it does look oversized for you or undersized, then of course you can make your own modifications. Since we did that though, all we have to do is now add the UI scale to this as well. So we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste the UI scale inside of here. And now we are done with that GUI as well. Now, the next GUI that we have is actually chest, which is a screen GUI that holds multiple billboard GUIs. 
And any billboard GYs we don't actually have to do this for. So we can actually just completely skip over all of them. Next, we have click buttons. So let's go ahead and convert that to offset. And I think that sizing looks fine. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the positioning of this. God, I just have to say something. Roblox Studio is the buggiest program that I've ever used. And it's insane that this is for developing games where I feel like you should expect bugs the least. But literally, as I'm recording a video, Roblox Studio bugs out once again. And when I select screen GUIs, I'm able to see the anchor point and position. But when I select a frame, and keep in mind that screen GUIs don't even have this property. But when I select the frame, those properties appear as blank, which is just something that I've never even seen before. Like, I literally have no idea what is even going on here. Yeah, that 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 is just so weird. Um, I love Roblox Studio. Okay, so now that I've restarted my Roblox Studio and we can actually continue on with the video, hopefully that bug will not pop up again, just like the thousands of other bugs that are in this program. Sorry for the little tangent, but man, Roblox Studio has just been getting my blood boiling recently like this this application is it's insane how many bugs are in it it really is insane anyways the only other thing that i want to do aside from converting the size from scale to offset is change the positioning a tiny bit similar to how we did for the achievements also inside of this frame we actually have a ui aspect ratio constraint which we do need to delete now going on with the positioning of this for the anchor point on the y we already set that to one let's set the y scale to one for the position and then let's subtract about five to give it the same amount of spacing that we do the achievements frame from the right side of the screen again you don't have to do that but i'm doing it because i think that looks nicer then again let's go ahead and copy and paste the ui scale directly inside of here and now we're all good for that gui now to speed things up a little bit what i did is basically expanded every single screen gui or at least the ones that have something in them other than service GUIs or billboard GUIs, which we don't need to modify like this egg, for example. And now what we're going to do is just select all of these instances that are stored inside other screen GUIs. So we're going to select all the frames. And if they have a bun inside of them, we'll select that as well. But we don't need to select surface or billboard GUIs, so we can skip right over those. And once we have them all selected, let's go ahead and use the unit conversion tool. So convert their size from scale to offset. And now all we really have to do is actually paste in that UI scale inside of each of these screen GUIs. Now, if you're like me, you might be thinking, well, do we need to manually paste that into every single screen GUI? Of course, you don't need to manually do this. You could actually write like a, a couple line script and then run that inside of the toolbar. And if you want to challenge yourself with that, you certainly can. What I would do is write a script which will loop through all the children inside a starter GUI. And if that screen GUI contains a frame or a text button inside of it, then you'll add the UI scale inside of it, which has a specific attribute and the specific tag. And it wouldn't really be that hard of a script to write, but also at the same time, is that quicker than just hitting control C, selecting all of these ones, and then hitting control shift V to paste the UI scale into all of them? Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I get to the point where it's like, I could write a script which will automatically do that and it would feel rewarding but also at the same time like if i'm just trying to save my own time then just doing this manually is really simple and would probably take just a few seconds whereas the script i could definitely see myself running into issues and it not working exactly how i wanted it so it could take multiple minutes but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and select all of those screen guis pretty much every screen gui i mean we're leaving the portal out for example because there is no frame or anything else inside of there it is just a surface gui but yeah, we're pretty much selecting all the screen GUIs. And then what we're going to do is hit Control, Shift, and V, paste the UI scale inside of all of them. And then we are pretty much all good to go. Now, like I said, if you do want to polish any of these, you certainly can. Make sure that you enable them, look through them, and see if you want to make any slight size adjustments to them. You certainly can. But this video isn't really meant to perfect these GUIs. It's just to teach you the main lesson of how we can easily make these GUIs scale for all different devices so that they no longer look weird on mobile, for example. I do want to touch up the hatch goal bun as well, just a tiny bit. Like, let's go ahead and fix its positioning. So for the anchor point on the X, we're going to set that to one. And for the positioning on the X scale, we're going to set that to one. And then let's go ahead and subtract five pixels so that it has the same spacing as the achievements, which is just directly above it. Now, you could also do this for the Y as well. Like if we set the anchor point to 0.5 and we set the Y scale position to 0.5. And then I don't know, like, let's say that we added 200 pixels to this. Maybe we do need to add more like 300. Let's do like 275. 275 is actually probably almost the exact positioning that we want. And now that we did that, the positioning on that is looking nicer in my opinion. So since we've made all those changes, let's go ahead 
ahead and change your device emulation to something smaller so that we can actually see it. Again, inside of Studio, when you're looking at your GUIs, they may look all messed up when you're looking at them from a different resolution than they were created at. But once you get into your game and you actually test this out, they should be perfectly fine. So now, once we've loaded into our game, we can see how all of our GUIs look. You might look at the hatch goal button and you might say, oh, that's really much further down than the achievements GUI than I thought. And the reason for that is because of the ignore GUI inset. So let's just go to hatch goal, let's set ignore GUI inset to true, and now see how it appears. And now when we load into our game and we look at it, we can now see that the hash goal bun is actually positioned where we originally intended for it to be positioned at. Cool, so I'm gonna switch my emulation back to HD 1080, and there's only about one more GUI really that we need to do this with, and that's inside of the replicated first, we have the loading GUI, so we can go ahead and throw in the UI scale to that. Now, is it really mandatory? Eh, not really, because the size is one on both the scale of the Y and the X. It doesn't really matter here because the canvas group is taking up the entire screen. So that sort of scaling is fine. If you want to convert it to offset, you can. It doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave mine at scale. Cool. So now we're pretty much done with modifying the GUIs in order to make them scale for different devices. There's another change that I want to make that relates to GUIs though, and that's actually with a couple of different scrolling frames. For instance, the pet inventory. A lot of people have asked me, hey, if I have like 100 pets, for example, I might not be able to see all those pets inside of my scrolling frame. How can I fix this? Well, I'm sorry when I created the original video that I didn't actually know about this, but it's a really simple and easy fix to do. Now, Roblox has actually added in something pretty recently with the Explorer, and they've basically made the search results so much better. So what we want to do is we actually want to find all of the scrolling frames inside of our game, which have the automatic canvas size property set to none. Now, like I said, this is actually extremely simple to do. All we have to do is go into the Explorer and search for that property's name and the value that we're looking for it to be set to. So literally, all we have to do is type out automatic canvas size equals and now the value that we want it to be set to. So we want to look for every instance which has the automatic canvas size property set to none. And now when we do that, we can see all of these different containers appear because their automatic canvas size is set to none. So like, let's select this container, for example, and then let's look at the automatic canvas size property and we can see that that is set to none. So what we want to do is we want to select all of these containers and we're going to change the automatic canvas size from none to Y. The reason that we're changing it to Y is because we want the canvas size of our container to stretch and change based on how many things are actually stored inside of it. So now this will allow it to scale with say all of the amount of pets that we possibly have in our inventory. Now let's go into our game and just check this out and see if that actually worked. Okay so the first thing that I want to say is that in my opinion it's really hard to tell how good your GUI actually looks when you're testing your game out in studio. Mostly because the viewport that you're playing it through it has a significantly smaller size than your normal screen size. So this like little square that you're actually seeing the game in, it's probably like one fourth of my total screen size in which I would normally be playing the game in. So what I like to do is publish the game and then actually test it out in the Roblox client to really get a full view of what my GUI looks like when people are actually playing the game. But just to quickly show you the automatic canvas size, if we scroll all the way down, we can see all 100 of the pets that I have. Now let's go ahead and hatch another pet. And when we hatch another pet, we can see that we're actually now able to scroll down a little bit further and view that pet. So let's go ahead and hatch a couple more. And now once we have enough to expand to another row, another row just comes up and this just keeps repeating itself. So now we can scroll down again and let's just say that we want to delete all of them. And once we delete all of them, our scrolling frame goes back to basically like its first size. And now I hatched some, but we're still not at the limit of its original size. So let's just keep going. And now we can see we are actually getting to its limit. So now once we hatch another one, the canvas size will change. And now we can see that we can scroll down even further. Now, again, for the most part, I don't think the other things will be affected by that change. So I don't think you'll need to modify the size of, say, these pet instances, for example. But you might need to. It really all depends. I would recommend that you just go through your game, explore all of your different GUIs, and see if there are any other changes or touch-ups that you want to make to really perfect them. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with all that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. As always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button and go down below in the description to check out my Patreon or Monster.dev, which is my own website where you can gain access to a ton of resources to easily develop your next Roblox game. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>